marriage has come from, you're in the trenches and the worst thing is happening, and you turn to each other and say, I'm all in and I'm not turning my heart away. Your marriage will not be defined by the size of your struggles, but by the size of your commitment to overcome the struggles together. Marriage is a husband, a wife, and God. That is a blessed marriage. I believe God wants to release you into everything He has for you. Hey guys, what's going on? It's me, Nancy. If you're a first or second time guest, or if you're joining us online, we're super excited that you're here. There are some neat ways to get connected. One is through our website at dtcchurch.com, where you can learn more about our church, watch past services, or see what's happening up next. You can also stay connected through any of these social media web platforms. If you have any questions about anything you see or hear today, you can stop by our information center located in the lobby. If it's your first or second time joining us here at DTC, take a quick moment and look for the connection card in the seat in front of you. We would love to get some information over to you about DTC Church and get you your free gift. You can also pull out your cell phone, then text the word WELCOME to 956-431-0272. You're going to receive a link where you can fill out some of your information. It's that simple. Enjoy the service. Well, well, we do believe that. We believe you belong here. And so good job getting to the house of God this morning. Y'all having a good time so far? Good stuff. A couple quick things before I jump into the Word. Don't forget, next month uh, we are having our annual EXO uh, marriage conference. And so you can register for that already. If you go to online, I gave you some information about that last week. But you can go to our website and get all the details there. Uh, again, if you're a part of a champions team here at DTC Church, you have a discounted rate to come to this uh, conference with just amazing speakers, and so uh, make sure that you uh, use the link that you have specially for you. Uh, also, this later on today, uh, right after the service, we have our starting point that we have on the fourth Sunday of every month, and then also youth night is happening this week, so make sure to bring your kids out uh, to youth night uh, this coming week, all right? All right, well, again, glad you guys are here, and, and if you are tuning in online, we welcome you as well. And so, of course, we just kind of ended our fast. We've been on a fast and time of fasting and prayer over the last two weeks, and, 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 and how many of you are willing to be honest that you waited till midnight to eat something last night, you know? Uh, but, but, you know, thank you. You know, I, I commend you guys for, for doing that. Congratulations on, on participating uh, on the fast, you know, I know that it's a, it's a sacrifice, you know, when you got to, you know, let go of some things that, that, that you don't want. And, and, but it, it's a sacrifice that the Bible says that, that God is a rewarder of those that diligently seek after him. And, and so I believe that during a time of fasting and prayer, that's what you're doing. And so I know that God is going to be faithful to his word and that, that he's going to bless you for your faithfulness. And so, again, good job with that. Uh, but today I'm going to continue our, our series that we've been on for the last couple of weeks called Goals. And today, uh, the title of my message is Relationship Goals. I want to talk to you about, you know, some, some relate, how relationships make a difference in our life. And I want to focus on, on four key relationships uh, that I believe make a significant difference in our life. Uh, but before I get into that, when you really think about it, life is about relationships. You know, it's about relationships. You know, when you're born, you're born into a family of relationships. You know, as you grow up, you develop relationships with your siblings, with classmates, with friends. You know, you have relationships at church. You have relationships at work. Life is about relationships. It's, and so if you're the kind of person that says, man, I just don't want to have any relationships. Well, good luck with that because humans are everywhere, right? And, and wherever there are humans, you're going to have contact with them. But we are, the, the reality is, is that God has created us to be in relationships. He has created us to be in a relationship with Him, and He's created us to be in a relationship with others. Remember, we can't even fulfill the great commandment that God gave us, which is to love Him with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and to love others, to love our neighbor like we, in the same way that we love ourselves. So, so God has created us to be in relationships. You know, there are relationships in your life that God is going to use or utilize to propel you towards your destiny. There are people that, that God is going to bring into your circles that are a part of his plan to help you fulfill God's plan for your life. 
And so, and so you want to be, we want to be mindful of the different relationships that God is going to utilize to make a significant difference in our life. And so again, today I want to, I want to focus uh, my talk around relationships, specifically about, around four relationship goals that I believe will lead you to God's best. And so, so whether you are single, whether you're dating, you're married, I, I want to talk to you about four relationships. The first relationship I want to talk to you about is a relationship with a friend that lasts forever. As you know, in life, you know, you have friends that, 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 that you have for a moment, and then sometimes those friendships end. But there is a friend that lasts forever, and of course, a friend that lasts forever, my friends, is Jesus. It's a friend that, that, that you develop a relationship with him now, and it also goes into eternity. And so we have, you and I have a friend that lasts forever. Jesus told the disciples once, he says, you know, he said to them, he says, I no longer call you my servants. He says, I now call you my friends. And do you know that God calls you a friend? God wants to have a friendship with you. Listen to the way Proverbs 18 describes our friendship with Christ. It says, a man of many companions may come to ruin, but there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. And that friend is Jesus. He's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. Jesus, my friend, is a friend that you can count on in good times and in hard times. He is a friend that that is stable and steady and that lasts forever. By far the greatest relationship uh, that you can have or the greatest friend that you can have is your friendship with Christ. Let me say this statement to you. Your relationship with Christ will do more for you than any other relationship. Think about that. Because if that's true, then what does that say to us? It says that 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 this should be our most important relationship. Not the relationship with our boss, not the relationship with our career, not the relationship with our, our family, our mother or father, or our spouse, or our kids. But if this statement is true that your relationship with Christ would do more for you than any other relationship, then 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 what God is saying to us is that He should be first. And not just, not just because we say he's first, but that we genuinely have a, 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 a priority commitment where Jesus is first in our life. Because that is the relationship that can make the most significant difference in our life. In Acts chapter 4, we, we read about Peter and John. And, and Peter and John, the scripture describes how they were doing great things. They, they, were, they were doing such amazing things that the people around them were left in awe of Peter and John. They, would look, they looked at Peter and John and they said, man, you know, we know who these guys are. We know their background. We know where they come from. We know the neighborhood they grew up in. There's no way that they could be doing some of the things that they are doing. Listen to the way they tried to figure them out here in verse 13. It says, when they saw the courage of Peter and John and realized that they were unschooled, ordinary men. They were astonished and they took note that these men had been with Jesus. What made Peter and John stand out, my friends? Their relationship with Jesus. What gave them the courage and the confidence that they had? Their relationship with Jesus. What helped them to overcome their background, their past, their lack of education, their relationship with Jesus. What caused them to be distinguished amongst all the other people? The fact that they spent time with Jesus. See, God took their ordinary and made them extraordinary. And God will do the same thing in your life. When you spend time with Christ, he'll take your ordinary life and he'll turn it into an extraordinary life. He'll take what the, the, the common in your life and he'll make it uncommon. He'll take, he'll take the little that you have and he'll multiply it into so much more. He'll take your natural ability and he'll put his supernatural on it. That's what happens with a relationship with Christ. I think I'm preaching to myself this morning. Thank the Lord. Oh, there you are. Jesus is the greatest force on earth. Jesus has changed the world and made it better. And when you walk with Christ, my friends, he will change your world and he will make you better. That's what happens. 
And that's why, you know, as, 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 as a church, as a people of faith, you know, our, one of our callings is to help people to get into a relationship with Jesus because we know that that relationship is going to have the most significant impact in a person's life. That relationship is, the relationship with Christ is going to bring so much value to that person. It's going to make them stronger. It's going to make them more confident. It's going to make them more courageous. It's going to give people more faith. Your relationship with Christ, my friends, is what will help you to do more than you ever thought that you could do in life. He's the greatest force. And this is why Philippians 4.13 says this, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. In other words, my friends, there is nothing you can do through Christ who will give you strength. Nothing is impossible to you when you walk with Jesus. Just think about that. So many people are limited by the impossibilities of life. So many people are limited by their background and say, well, you know, I can't do that because of where I come from. Well, you know, I, I can't do that because, you know, my parents never did that. Or, you know, I can't do that because I didn't get the right education. I can't speak this way because I, I don't know how to do it. But God says to you, there is nothing that you can't do. Absolutely nothing that is impossible to you. There is no dream that's too big. There's no challenge that's too hard. There's no obstacle that you cannot overcome. Why? Because you can do all things through Christ who gives you strength. Can I get one person to believe in that here this morning? And so one of the relationship goals that I challenge you with is, is, is to develop a relationship with a friend that lasts forever. Here's a second relationship goal I encourage you to have is to have a, a relationship with purpose-driven friends. See, we, we've heard it all our lives that, that, that tell me who your friends are and I'll tell you who you are. And, and, and the reason for that, my friends, is because whatever's on our friends rubs off on us. And so I want to encourage you to, to have a relationship go to have purpose-driven friends. See, our friends, my friends, have a significant impact in the kind of person that we are and in the kind of person that we become. If you have a child that all of a sudden starts to slack off at school or begins to go off track, one of the first things that you have to do is go look at who their friends are. Go look at who they're hanging out with. If you want to achieve big dreams, surround yourself with others who have big dreams. If, if, if you want to fulfill God's calling on your life, surround yourself with others who are pursuing God and his purpose for their life. 1 Corinthians 15, says this about friends. He says, do not be misled. Bad company corrupts good character. In other words, watch your friends closely. Why? Because bad company rubs off. But you know that the opposite is also true. That, that if, if, if bad company can affect good character, then good company can build your character. And so, and so we want to be mindful of the people that we're around. Proverbs chapter 13 verse 20 says this, Whoever walks with the wise becomes wise, but the companion of fools will suffer harm. In other words, my friends, you want to gain more wisdom in life? Get around some people that are a little bit wiser in certain areas of your life. He said, he who hangs with the wise grows wise. So I want to encourage you to make it a goal. Make it a goal to have relationships in your life with purpose-driven friends. Friends that are heading in the same direction as you are. If you want to get closer to God, get around some people that are getting closer to God. If you want to achieve and attain more of, of your God-given purpose, get around some people that want to do the same thing. If you want to, if, if, if you want all the, the, if you want to achieve all the goals that God has for you, then get around some people that are trying to achieve those as well. You know, here at, here at church, we have different ways to, to help people to develop purpose-driven friends or to, you know, to develop purpose-driven friendships. You know, as you know, uh, the second Wednesday of every month, we have what we call sisterhood. On the third Wednesday of every month, we have what we call man cave for all the men. We have a champions team group of people that, that serve together and chase after the things of God together. We have a, a next coming next month, we have our community groups as a place where, where you can surround yourself with purpose 
driven friends, because my friends, the people around you make a significant impact in who you are and who you become. And so I want to encourage you to make it a goal to have some purpose driven friends. Here's the third relationship goal I want to encourage you with. It's to, it's to marry your best friend. Now, if you're already married and you say like, man, I didn't marry my best friend, don't, don't panic. There, there's still hope. But here, this is what I'm, try, this is what I'm saying. People who are, who are happily married for many years are usually married to someone that they call their best friend. Now, sometimes the relationship doesn't start that way, but it becomes that. And so, so what, I'm, what I mean by marry your, best friend, marry your best friend is that marry a person where you are developing a strong friendship that goes beyond the super, superficial things like looks, money, and material possessions. Because, because I hate to break it to you, but the reality is, is that looks are going to fade and gravity eventually wins. And so he may look like a stud right now, but 30 or 40 years later, he ain't going to look that way. You know, she may be the hottest thing you've ever seen right now, and in 30 or 40 years, she's going to look even better. Hey, I'm smarter than I look. I, I have a wife. And so your relationship has to be built on something deeper than looks and attraction. Another key truth to the success of your marriage is you have to see each other as teammates. I I find that that a lot of marriages sometimes struggle because they don't see each other as teammates. Instead, they see each other as opposition. Too often in a marriage, you know, a, a spouse, you know, tries to win their side of the argument. You know, I, you know, I'm trying to prove my point and I'm trying to prove that I'm right. But here's the reality, that if you approach it in that way where you're trying to be right, the reality is you'll always lose. Because the Bible says that when you got married, you are no longer two, you are now one. You're no longer two people, you're one. So your, your, your individual uh, vision, your individual goal is no longer just one, it's, it's, it's two now. And so, but too often what happens is, is we tried so hard to win to be right. But if you, if you strive to be right, you'll always lose. Because here's the deal. If you win a discussion or a conflict or an argument with your spouse and she loses, the reality is you lost too. Because you're one, you're no longer two. And the enemy is, is so committed. He is a master at, at, trying, is, at, at dividing couples, dividing married couples, and, and trying to get couples to focus on, on them being right and, and their point always being the one that wins and them always being the one that, that gets their way. But if you do it that way, my friends, you are not going to succeed and have the healthy marriage that you can have. Listen to the way Jesus describe this he says if a house is divided against itself that house cannot stand you know why marriages fall apart my friends because there's two individuals that are trying to get their way but when you got married that ended that was the single life you the bible says you are now one listen to the way ephesians chapter 5 verse 31 puts this listen to what it says It says, a man leaves his father and mother and is joined to his wife, and the two are united into one. In other words, my friends, you are no longer two individuals on opposite teams. Opposite teams, you are teammates. Your marriage is stronger and better when you work together. And so in a marriage, you want to try to focus on winning, winning together. Your teammates, you make, yourselves, you make yourself stronger. The two of you working together makes your marriage, makes you better, and it makes your marriage better. But again, the enemy is, is, is committed. He is committed to trying to get you to get your way. Because he knows if you can get so stubborn in wanting things your way, then ultimately what is, happen, is going to happen is that house is going to be divided. And if the house is going to be divided, then that house is not going to be able to survive. 
And so if you're married today or looking to get married one day, one of the battles that you have in your marriage is the fight to stay as one is the fight to say, hey, it's no longer just about me. It's no longer about me getting my way. It's about me finding that middle with my spouse so that we can both win. See, it's not about being right. It's about winning together. And so, and so, so I want to encourage you to, to make it one of your, your, your relationship goals to keep your house united. You know, be aware, be, be mindful that there is an enemy that, is, that is, is present and trying to divide you. And so keep your house strong, keep your house healthy by working together, by approaching your relationship that, hey, we're teammates, we're on the same team, we're not oppositions, we're not enemies. The enemy wants you to, make, he wants you to become enemies. And there are some days where it feels that way, but remind yourself that you're not. You're not on opposite teams, you're on the same team, and when you work together, your marriage is that much stronger. Amen, amen. All right, so that's, that's, that's a relationship go in the area of marriage. Here's another relationship go I want to encourage you to have, and it's friends without benefits. If you're single today, one of the challenges that you face in, in, in the sensual world that, uh, world that we live in today is to not give in to the normal in the world. You see, it is normal to have friends with benefits. It is normal to live with somebody before you get married. It is normal to do all the things that a married couple do, does before you get married. But you don't want to be normal because normal isn't working. You don't want to be like everybody else. Why? Because God has called you. He has a higher calling on your life. He has prepared something better. He has prepared, prepared something greater for you. And so you want to resist the norm and instead do it God's way. So whether you are single, dating, or married, listen to what the Word says in regards to this matter. Psalm 119. It says, how can a young person stay on the path of purity? by living according to your word. And so how, do you, how can a person, whether you're single, whether you're married, or whether you're dating, how can a person stay pure in a very sexually immoral society and culture? And God says the way we can stay pure, the way we can stay focused is by living according to God's word. You know, the Bible says that out of the overflow of a man's heart, the words will come forth. And so what you want to put inside of your heart is God's word, because God's word will be a compass. It'll direct your life. It'll give you the words to speak. It'll give you the vision that you're pursuing in life. And so God says, how can you avoid it? How can you live a, a pure and godly life? And he says, by living according to God's word. You seek God with all your heart, and you put his word in your heart. And you say, and you pray prayers like the one that God taught us to pray, where he taught us to pray, lead me away from temptation and deliver me from evil. This should be a prayer that we should all pray on a consistent basis. Lord, lead me away from temptation and deliver me from evil. Why, my friends? Because you can't fall into temptation if you are not around temptation. And so you want to ask God, Lord, lead me away from temptation. Lead me away from whatever may cause me to be tempted. Lead me away from whatever may cause me to fall. Lead me away from whatever might cause harm and pain to my life. And so we do this by living according to God's word. And so learn how to follow your faith and not your feelings. Remember, we live in a, in, in a society, in a culture where people love to follow their feelings. People love to do whatever they feel like. Doing. Well, this is what I feel like doing, so that's what I'm going to do. But the problem with that is often your feelings don't line up with God's word. And your feelings will mislead you. You ever met that, that person that's so uh, in love with somebody, but they can't see all the flaws that everybody else sees? I mean, nobody here has that kind of relationship, but, but you guys know somebody, right? Everybody else around them sees some of the flaws in the person they're dating, but that person says, no, no, they're perfect. What is it that their feelings are making them blind? It's not love. It's their feelings. 
Their feelings are not allowing them to see the reality of what's in front of them. And so let me encourage you to, to follow your faith and not your feelings. Your feelings will mislead you, so instead follow God's word and your faith in him. When you and I choose to do life God's way, when we choose to do relationship God's way, it's better and it leads to a better result. Remember the scripture says, Jesus said this one day, he says that, that the road that leads to pain and, and destruction and chaos in people's life, he says it's a wide road. He said, but there's another road, a better road, a road that is less traveled, he described that as the narrow road. He says most people take the wide road. Most people take the common road. Most people take the, the easy road. He said, but there's a narrow road. It's a little more challenging to take. But if you're willing to walk down the narrow road, he says you're going to, you're going to experience and find life in a whole different way. And so a part of our faith, a part of our following Christ is, is we're trying to follow Jesus on the narrow road. He said that this is the road that leads to a, a better kind of life, a God kind of life. Now, it's, it's, it, it's the more challenging road. It's not the most popular road, but with God's help, we can do it. And that's why we got to go back to what we can lean on. We got to go back to that, that first relationship that we have, and it's with that friend that, that lasts forever. It's with that friend that sticks closer than a brother. It's our relationship with Jesus. Every single day, my friends, every single one of us needs the strength that God promises to provide. Every single day, we need that strength that God says, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Every day, we need that. We cannot be the, the men or women God has called us to be without God's strength. We cannot stay on that narrow road without God's strength, but with it we can. And that's why Jesus said nothing is impossible to those who follow Jesus. Nothing is too difficult for those who lean on my strength. And so I wanna encourage you as, you, as you as you move into this year, and I know some of these relationships you may already have in place, and good job. I encourage you to continue to cultivate these relationships. Maybe you look at these four relationship goals that I've just shared with you and, and you say, you know what, I have one or two of those, but not three or four, not the other two. Well, maybe that's part of your goal is to work on some of those relationships. But always, always, my friends, keep the number one relationship in front of you because the number one relationship with Christ will help all the other relationships work. Yeah. Amen. Do you guys receive that with me today? Let, let, let me pray for us this morning. So, Father, we come before you today, and uh, thank you, Lord, for just all that you give us every day, Lord God. Every breath that we have, the gift of, of life is, 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 is a blessing, Lord God. Thank you for the family, the relationships that are around us, Lord. And thank you for the relationship that we can have with you. I pray for all of us here today, Lord God, that these relationship goals that lie before us, Help us, Lord God, to, to, to water some of those relationships. Help us to, to cultivate the relationships that make a significant difference in our life. I pray, Lord, that you would help every marriage here, Lord God, to be strong and healthy. Help every single person out in the, in the dating world, Lord God. Give them the strength that they need, Father God, every day. And help each one of us, Lord God, to to stay connected with you so that you can make our life go from ordinary to extraordinary. In Jesus' name, amen and amen, amen. Listen, well, we're gonna take a moment as, as, you, as we do every service to give everyone an opportunity to, to enter into this relationship with Christ. See, I, I don't know where you're at here today. Maybe, maybe you're walking with Jesus and, and that's awesome. You know, or maybe there was a time you were walking close with him, but maybe you've kind of backtracked and you've gotten off course. Or maybe you're here today and, and, and you, you, you don't have a relationship with Christ. You haven't been walking with him. The good news is that, that you don't have to go and get your life in a, in a certain way, put it all in order to walk with Christ. Jesus said that he didn't come to, to condemn us. He came to build us up. Jesus came to give us a gift 
the gift of forgiveness of our sins, the gift of life, and the gift of having a personal relationship and friendship with Jesus. Your relationship with Christ, my friends, is by far the most significant relationship you can have. And so let's take a moment right now and let's, let's respond to what Jesus wants to have with us. Right where you are, just, just close your eyes and bow your heads with me for a second. If you're here today, my friend, and, and maybe there was a time you were walking close to Christ, but maybe you kind of got an off course and the Lord is calling you today to come back, come back home, get back close to him once again. Or maybe you're here today and you say, you know what, I, I don't have a relationship with Christ, but I want one. Well, that's you here today. Why were you at? As a sign of faith to God, we lift up your hand to the Lord. Just as a sign of faith to the Lord. Just all across the room, lift up your sign as a, a hand as a sign of faith to God. All across the room, God sees you, God sees you. God sees you, my friend. God sees you. God bless you. God bless you. You can put your hands down. Amen. Now, let's, let's, let's pray this, this prayer of faith together. Say, Lord God, I know that through Jesus, I'm forgiven of my sins. And I receive a new life. Jesus, I receive you as my Savior, as my Lord. And I thank you for being my friend that sticks closer than a brother and that lasts forever. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Listen, friends. If you have made a decision for Christ today or, or recently, the Bible says this is a, this is a new beginning. You know, or, or maybe you've renewed your commitment to Christ today. Congratulations. You know, Here we are in the year 2020. I believe God has greater things in store for you. God has promised us that His plans for us are good, not to harm us, to give us hope and to give us a future. And so you can look to the future. You can look to tomorrow with great expectation. You can look to tomorrow with hope and know that God has something for you this year. So I want to encourage you to keep coming to church. If you have made a decision for Christ on the back of the seats in front of you, there's a connection card. Fill that out. Drop it off in the offering bucket in a little bit. And, 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 and I'm going to send you a free gift to help you in your commitment with God. And then I just want to encourage you to keep cultivating, keep developing, stay close to Christ. By far the greatest relationship we can have this side of eternity is our relationship with Jesus. Keep Christ number one in your life. Make him the priority of your life. Talk to him every day and just watch what God will do in your life. Amen. God bless you guys. It's me, Nancy. Here's what's up next. Mark your calendars for the launch of the spring semester of Youth Night. January 29th is our neon launch party right here at DTC. Youth Night starts at 7 p.m. At DTC Church, marriages matter and it is important to invest into your marriage. Don't miss the XO Marriage Conference 2020, February 28th and 29th. Visit DTCChurch.com for a special early bird discount. Thanks again for joining us today. If you have any questions, you can stop by your information center. And don't forget, if it was your first time with us today, fill out a connection card and text the word welcome to 956-431-0272. We'll see you all at youth night.